massivedh.com. Big consumer brands pay him for data. It's data as a service. He was doing $40,000 a month a year ago, now doing 83,000 bucks a month. Just broke a million dollar run rate, which is great. But what I love is he's done this bootstrapped with a team of seven. So pretty high revenue per employee. You know, he'd maybe buy the business at 10 million, 15 million today. But again, totally bootstrapped. We'll see what happens next. Hey folks, my guest today is Gianluca Ruggiero. He is a global innovation and marketing expert with more than 20 years of working and cons consulting for Fortune 500 companies across five continents. After five years of working on proprietary AI technology, he launched Massive in 2019 to help companies launch successful products in today's hyper-competitive markets. The URL, if you want to follow along, is MassiveDH. That's D as in dog, H as in hog, dot com. All right, uh, Gianluca, you ready to take us to the top? Hi, how you doing, everybody? We are we are all doing well. So tell us, what are your customers paying you for? Uh, sorry, say it again. What are what are your customers paying you for? What do you do? So the um, basically we are a data as a service platform that um, provides our customers with a, a full cycle uh, product strategy management. So from product innovation to assortment optimization, all the way down to uh, category management uh, uh, and uh, everything that basically revolves around product. Uh, our typical customer is uh, large CPG companies like Procter and Gamble, Nestle, that kind of companies. And Espresso, Melissa, and Doug, the, these kinds Correct. of folks, yeah. Olay, etc. So, are they paying you SaaS fees or service fees? SaaS fees. It's okay. a subscription on a yearly basis. Uh, the average price of our services goal is defined by the category uh, that we analyze. So, for example, in the case of um, uh, you know cosmetics, you can assume, like for example, facial moisturizers in one category, facial cleansers is another category, and the price goes between one hundred thousand dollars and one hundred fifty thousand dollars. And is that based off number of SKUs analyzed, or number of seats, or something else? It's um, actually not very much based on, it's based on how many retailers, for example, we have to analyze for customers, uh, depending to your point of, yeah, a bit about the extensions of the category in terms of SKU that needs to be monitored, because we take a census of the categories that we analyze. So we, in our database, there is always every single SKU is included. But depending on how many SKUs the customer wants to monitor, of course, the price uh, varies. And and yeah, in a mi to a minor extent, also the number of seats. Uh, okay. As a thing. And how many of these customers are paying you today? Uh, we have currently nine, uh, uh, well, no, eight customers paying. Okay. And so can we take eight times that 150000 bucks a year? You're doing about $1.2 million a year right now? We are currently at one because we are... Uh, it's funny, we started when we started in 2019, we were pricing a bit lower, actually much lower. As we grew, we extended the pricing because we we noticed that the, the problem that we were solving was much bigger than the price we had. So we started at a typical, more normal SaaS price, and then we uh, we grew, basically. And Gianluca, if you're doing $83,000 a month today or a million dollar run rate, what were you doing exactly one year ago? Do you remember? Well, one year ago was actually half. So it was 40,000. It was a bit less actually than half. Oh, what's going on there, YouTube? Good to see you guys. Now imagine this. You love watching these interviews with SaaS founders, but imagine if we took all of the valuation data out from over 2,807 interviews I've done manually. Saves you a lot of time. Well, we've done this. We've built it into the beautiful interface inside of FounderPath. Check this out. I'll show you how you can access this in a second, but you log in, you connect your Stripe account, you see your valuation in real time, you can see what it changed over the past 88 days, and even set goals for valuation this year. Now, the secret to valuation is there's many different ways to value a SaaS business. So the reason you're going to see three or four different valuations inside of your FounderPath dashboard, this is all free, by the way, is because depending on who's doing the buying of your SaaS company, you're going to get a different valuation. A VC is going to pay a different valuation. Private equity firm is different. If you're going to do a minority sale, that's different. And if you sell the whole business, that's a different valuation. You can see all those when I hover over here. 
right? So the teal is what a VC would pay. Yellow is what private equity. And red is if you sold the whole thing outright. Now, what's cool about this is this is not built off random data. Again, you guys hear these interviews on YouTube. All these data are built from real-time valuation data points found or share with us on the show. So traction, 1.2 million. Seed round, 3.7 raise. They sold 22% of their business. Go in here and filter by the event. Maybe you only want to see companies that have sold the whole business. Well, here are a bunch that have been acquired, the valuation and the multiple. Maybe you're going out right now and you're raising your seed round. Well, go in here and look at all this recent seed deals that went down, what they raised, what valuation they raised at, and what percent that they sold. There's never been a larger data set of SaaS valuations than what you can get now inside of FounderPath, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. All right, we're gonna go back to the YouTube video here in a second, but if you wanna check this tool out, if you wanna jump in and sign up, you can check it out for free to get your valuation at this link, this link, founderpath.com forward slash products forward slash valuations, or if you go to founderpath.com and hover over products, click on get your valuation here, and go ahead and sign up to give it a whirl. Again, all that valuation data live right inside the platform. I hope to see you there. All right, let's jump back into the interview. And so how have you driven this growth? Have you bootstrapped the company or do you raise outside capital? Totally bootstrapped. Oh, I love that. Congrats. So how did you drive that growth? What's your customer onboarding strategy here? Um, yeah, that's, uh, um, I mean, uh, across, of course, uh, many, many uh, mistakes along the road. But uh, what we are doing is basically reaching out to them uh, with cold emails and cold messages. Uh, not very sophisticated strategy, honestly. And uh, just with our story, with our use cases. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, we were lucky enough to strike uh, from the get go, big customer prior contracts like Procter and Gamble, which has been. A How did you land? Pro Everyone would love to land Procter and Gamble as their first customer, but but Procter and Gamble is going to say you're a startup. I'm never going to bet on you. I'm not going to pay you 150 grand a year. How did you get that deal done? <laughs> yeah, so actually, these large companies for since a few years ago, since actually five years ago, they have people in the company who are uh, basically tasked with uh, finding startups which can up their game. And we were lucky. We actually reached out with a very basic and very actually bad cold email, I must say, which was not very sophisticated. But somehow it struck a chord uh, into what they were looking for, which was uh, new signals for uh, you know to to find alpha in product for product innovation. And the way we actually got the, the contract was that the guy uh, told us uh, an impossible, gave us an impossible task. He basically asked for a, to analyze a very difficult category out of China. They were getting crazy about that. They couldn't find, uh, you know, value. He was basically kind of saying, "Okay, you, you so claim." He, 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 cha he challenged you, and you delivered. He challenged us big time. Uh, we came back with the answer. It was uh, that was the wow moment, and then he said, "Okay, so." So, Gianluca, I think the wow here that I think my audience is going to be curious about is you mentioned your data as a service. Now, data as a service, you're only as strong as the data you're getting, and there's two kinds of data that you're buying it from someone else, or there's proprietary data. You're building tech and getting. Data, no one else has. Which one is it? We have proprietary data, which are basically a transformation of public data. What we do is we take uh, e-commerce data, like everything that you find on e-commerce retailer that is public, and we have an artificial intelligence, a true artificial intelligence that we developed. Uh, we started developing in 2014. Just uh, as a as a comment, uh, our team is is in Italy, and uh, we have more than one hundred papers published on AI. So it's serious stuff. Wow! How how many folks are full time today? Uh, three people in the engineering, and uh, we are like seven people right now. Uh, but we are very much scattered. We almost. We have two offices, but basically they're empty because we have uh, our CFO is out of Paris, our SDR is in Chicago, the chief revenue officer is in Germany. It's just, you know, the way we built. I am very happy with the team that I built and that and uh, a lot of talent, but we we didn't decide okay this is going to be the office today. Now, the the office I'm I'm here right in, right now in Connecticut. So 
we serve mostly U.S. market because it's the most dynamic and uh, responsive. But still, when it comes to talent, we have a very diverse. So Gianluca, just to cut to the chase here, though, you, you don't necessarily have um, a unique data set that nobody else can get. Your IP is really how you process public data to organize it and then use it to do analysis. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, so your IP is a it's process IP. It's not some secret data source only you have access to. Correct. Yeah. It's process I IP. See. Very good and point. why has no one else thought about running the same process? Well, I think it's because um, it's very difficult to put together uh, competence in uh, marketing, marketing strategy and AI for transformation. And uh, in during my uh, career, I was lucky enough to put together these two things. One thing that I noticed from typical Silicon Valley data as a service company is that they don't know very well the marketing, the market they're targeting to. Uh, so mm -hmm. they don't understand what happens in companies, what they're really looking for. And there is always this misunderstanding between what is a data point and an insight, which are two totally different things. So they tend to provide data points instead of insights. The transformative power of our technology is to transform these data points into actionable insights. And are you XCPG I though? I mean, are you? I mean, the, someone to trust for PNG to trust you to take data and put it in a sentence to make it insights and to drive strategy. Don't you have to have experience in like the moisturizer industry if you're giving PNG, you know, feedback on how to sell more moisturizer? Well, it, it, this is interesting. We actually. When we get the information from our AI, so the AI that we have does not require training. Uh, it's designed for that purpose because otherwise it wouldn't be scalable, scalable. But it's interesting that we gather information from the first data that we receive from AI that gives us more information than usually the customer has. And I know it sounds arrogant, but when we come into a meeting, uh, with uh, customers, because yes, we do meetings with customers. Although it's SaaS, uh, customer success is a big part, especially with a platform that is very big like ours. Uh, so we do training, but when we come into the meeting, we usually know uh, almost, I would say, more than the, the customer. Because you, you see, markets today, and I know it's your experience as well, are flooded with new products coming from small brands and things like that. And big companies have lost contact with reality because they don't have the data. So we come in with a fresher view. We understand straight from the voice of the customer what's going on in that market, what are the real trends, and also we can pinpoint what are the uh, new players that they never heard about before. I see. So you're you're when you say you're pulling data, you're going to like a big e-commerce thing like Walmart, for example, and you are pulling a bunch of metadata and you're using this kind of stuff to determine how many things are being sold and where and at what price point and margins and things like that. Exactly. Yep. Interesting. Okay. Um, and are all your customers brands or to hedge funds? I mean, this is valuable data for hedge funds. Oh, well, yeah. Hedge funds. Um, so I we had experience with both hedge funds and private equity. Uh, I think that for a go-to-market strategy, we are more viable, or let's put it this way, private equity is more viable for us because, uh, for example, we do play a role in the M&A strategy. We had a private equity uh, fund uh, uh, for which we did a pilot, which is the fund that is behind uh, uh, the um, Philadelphia 76ers, and they were yep. looking to purchase uh, new live events uh, like stadiums, arenas, things like that, and they used our data to assess which was the best. Um, but but Jen Lucas, sorry, just because we're short on time, they're not your current customer. That's not your focus today. It's not, but we are now expanding. Uh, for example, now one of our customers is Ch Changi Airport, which is the largest airport in the world out of Singapore, because we can actually, so I'm, I'm messing up. Actually, that came, we are opening to service um, uh, and that came out of the experience with the private equity hedge funds. Back to your question, not really a good target because they're used to buy uh, alternative data uh, by the kilo. Uh, yep. So quantity versus quality. We are very qualitative. So we are not exactly a target for them. Understood. Well, this is a heck of a thing you're building. I love that you're just three people with your revenue, the revenue per employees to the roof. And I always love high revenue per employee. Now, plan to stay bootstrapped or any plans to raise capital? 
Uh, we, that's a very, we don't know. Actually, we think uh, with this, at the time being, we can actually uh, do without funding. Funding would be fine uh, if we can, because we want to grow and uh, we want to hire. What would you value people. the business at today? Hmm, sorry? What, what would you value the business at today? Valuation. I mean, if I go uh, by a 10 factor, I would say, of course, $10 million or $50 million. Uh, so someone million. offered you here listening, there's there's investors that listen all the time. If they offered you a $2 million seed round on a 10 million post money valuation, so they're buying 20% of the business, would you accept? Mm, I don't know, actually. <laughs> Good answer. Know. Leave yourself some negotiation room. All right. On that note, though, Gianluca, let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Um, uh, mm, huh. I know the the title in Italian. It's uh, it's a book from. Um, oh my God, I don't remember. Anyway, let's put it this way. We'll Blue skip Ocean. it. Number Blue number Ocean. two. Is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, no, my former my first CEO uh, who is not working anymore back in Unilever, Umberto Rondani. He was a total genius, uh, and uh, I'm still looking for something as a genius as he was. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building a business? Oh, um, um, well, we currently use uh, Pipe Drive, but I am looking. I, I'm exploring a lot, so I don't okay. have an answer. But I'm very excited about many things that are coming up with AI. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Um, yeah, uh, eight, eight hours. And what's seven your, hours. And, and what's your situation? Married, single, kids. Married with two kids, uh, we just did an, uh, uh, 20 years of marriage. Wow. Congratulations. And how old are you? I am 53. 53. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. Um, yoga. Yo <laughs> there you guys have it, guys. MassiveDH.com. Big consumer brands pay him for data. It's data as a service. He was doing $40,000 a month a year ago, now doing $83,000 a month. Just broke a million dollar run rate, which is great. But what I love is he's done this bootstrapped with a team of seven. So pretty high revenue per employee. You know, he'd maybe buy the business at $10 million, $15 million today. But again, totally bootstrapped. We'll see what happens next. Gianluca, thank you for taking us to the top. Thank you. Bye. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers. They try and do a deal live, and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.